Rococo furniture is going to take on many of the ideas of the Rococo movement overall. We're going to see the use of mirrors, and this becomes much more common. Now, the reason is they've developed new ways of working and constructing mirrors. They're applying silvering in the plate form to the back rather than the more traditional mirror, which would be polished silver or just a piece of glass that's been sort of just painted on the back. And by the way, that's why when you look at old mirrors, you see this gray or black. That's where the silver plating on the back has released and oxygen is getting in there, oxidizing the silver, of course, eventually turning it black. Now, these mirrors are not always massive. Of course, glass is very expensive in large panes in the Rococo, so seeing multiple pieces is not uncommon. Now, the mirrors also reflect this need for the aristocracy to look at themselves to make sure that they are presentable. It is all about show at this point. Uh, so, that's a really good way of understanding the Rococo. It's about aristocratic luxury. We'll also see furniture that is light in weight and appearance. As you look at, these are not the massive, heavy pieces of furniture that we saw in the Gothic or the Romanesque. Things are getting lighter and daintier, and that's important. First, it shows status, because I can keep this really uh, delicate piece of furniture safe. I don't have to worry about my eight children crawling all over it. It also means that I can afford that kind of craftsmanship. Of course, it takes a higher level of craftsmanship to develop something that's going to be lightweight, that's going to appear much lighter, but also be just as functional as other pieces. So we have these lightweight pieces such as this stone top table. Uh, this is probably a writing desk, really, and we're looking at the front of it. Uh, we'll also see the use of light colors such as white trying to lighten up the feeling of a room, really opening it up by using those lighter tones. And we see claw and ball foot. This is a decorative form that we tend to associate primarily with Queen Anne and Chippendale, but we'll see it on the continent as well. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's a claw on a ball. And we see in France the peds de biche, which is basically these deer hoof uh, forms. Again, we've seen animal feet used as the feet of stools and chairs going back to ancient Egypt. It's not a new idea, but as we move forward, we're going to see certain animals becoming far more common. For example, a lion's foot is going to be far more common than, say, an elephant foot or even a deer foot. Now, the next two are really easily confused. We're going to see serpentine forms, uh, so serpentine tops, and then we're going to see bomba uh, or bomb uh, form when we get into the vertical. But right now we're dealing with the horizontal. And what I'm referring to is this top with a very serpentine curvilinear form. In the Rococo, the top of furniture usually reflects something about its construction, the shape of its construction, but it tends to take on this very complicated serpentine form when you look at it horizontally. So imagine cutting this in half and looking at the very complex form that it creates. They're doing this to show off their skill and their ability. Frequently, this will be coupled with, for example, a marble top, but also these bum fronts. And what you're looking at is as we look down the piece, we again have that very curvilinear form moving in and out as we move down. Now, this gives it this very storybook sort of sense, as if it's something we would expect from a Disney cartoon. But you can imagine how it becomes a status symbol, because most carpenters aren't going to be able to do this. The idea of curving a piece of furniture is incredibly intimidating. It's one thing to create something out of 90 degree angles. It's another to curve it so that nothing is actually straight on the piece, except for the very top and the bottom of the feet. And of course, if it's a craftsman showing off, that means it becomes a status symbol. And you really want something like that because it shows that you can afford to pay a craftsman to create this really intricate, really difficult piece of furniture.